Welcome to Choices. For those of you that are new to the show, we interview healthcare professionals from Southern Vancouver Island and the South Gulf Islands. Today we're actually focusing on detoxification and we are on location at the Planner Organic Market at the Saanich Centre. And with me today is professional chef Laura Moore. And welcome to be on the show, Laura. Hey. Hey. Today we're going to have a look at the different produce that Planet Organic offers that can be used partly for detoxification, which is typically done in the springtime. And we're coming up to the spring soon, so we thought it'd be timely to uh, have Laura show us what kind of produce we can use. So, let's start off first by having you tell us maybe what brought you into this field of work. I understand you're a professional chef. Yes. Yes. And you work with Whole Foods. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I feature the use of Whole Foods in all of the recipes and menus that I provide for my customers. Uh, my business name is The Good For You Gourmet. Okay. And I am a Whole Foods personal chef and caterer. Uh, I serve the Southern Vancouver Island and the Gulf Islands. Uh, providing wedding, catering, and personal chef services. Wonderful. Uh, I cater to any specialty diet requests or dietary restrictions or allergies, including celiac. Uh, but what led me to get involved with that was my own, my own learning, my own experiences with nutrition and health. And um, as a young girl, I, I had migraines. And that brought me to, into health food stores to try and find an answer. Uh, and I, I learned about valerian and right. herbs yeah. uh, that fever few. Um, and of course, while I was in Malcolm's store, I'd start looking around and learning about the products that they had in the store. And that was really the beginning of it. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So now it's become a, compa a passion. Yes. And, and of course, uh, uh, many years of being vegetarian and vegan and thinking what's the best diet for me and what are the best kind of foods mm -hmm. and discovering for myself what worked for me, looking at things like the blood typing diet, the Ayurvedic diet, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. And, and changing my diet until it w became one that worked for me. And, and the base of it for me, the commonalities and a lot of the recommendations out there and a lot of diet trends and fads are whole foods. Get yeah. back to using natural food. So that's what I okay. care about. Perfect. And behind us, we have a whole rack of whole foods. So let's go through then and, and see which foods would be used for any kind of detoxification program. I noticed you had some uh, turmeric root. Yes, we have, we have some of the um, root vegetables here that can definitely be used in daily cooking. Uh, they're used in a lot of traditional foods, uh, Eastern Asian foods. Garlic is used in pretty much every culture. Sure. Uh, using them all the time, every day, often in different foods you're cooking. Definitely gonna give you the health benefits. Um, these kind of things, whole foods, is you wanna be eating them as much as possible all the time. Okay. You take the occasional break for a treat that isn't, it's up to you. Right. But these kind of foods are anti-inflammatory, they're anti-fungal, um, uh, they're, um, they're good for your blood, they're good for your blood pressure. Now how would somebody use the uh, turmeric root? I mean, many people uh, are used yeah, to the spice. This is, yeah, this is ginger, this is turmeric. They okay. are related and you can see they're very similar. Uh, but basically, I just take a small spoon and I scrape a small spoon with a sharp edge and I, I scrape off the skin and then I just grate it. Just grate it's it, like, just like, like you would carrot. ginger. Okay. Yeah, just like it, uh, and it's less okay. fibrous than ginger. Okay. Uh, the younger the ginger, the less fibrous it is, but this stuff t tends to grate much easier. Okay. And then um, use it fresh in any recipe that calls for dried and, and generally dried is more concentrated. Okay. Because all the per volume, the concentration with the water has been removed. So sure, it would weight, be more concentrated. Yeah, yes. the, the dry is more concentrated. But you're getting live enzymes and, and fresher is generally better if you can okay. get if you can get fresh, raw, turmeric. Yes. Well, lately now Fabulous. in Vancouver, we can now. Vancouver yeah. and Victoria were getting yeah. fresh uh, well, turmeric all the time. Yeah. They have it here at Planet Maybe. Organic, and I used it today in the recipe that I made. And we'll be seeing that later. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, back here now, we've got quite a selection of leafy vegetables. Are there any that you would recommend for detoxing that are good for... Well, all the green veggies are great for, for spring cleansing. Spring. Okay. That's it. If you look at the history of humans, it, throughout the winter, there's very few greens. There's very, it's all becomes, all that's really left is 
tubers and potatoes and whatever sure. they managed to preserve mm -hmm. from the last year's garden. Uh, and then in the spring, all these greens start coming up. So that's nature's way of saying, hey, this is a good time. <laughs> start eating, start. Start eating more greens. Right. Uh, of course, they all have lots of fiber. They all have lots of minerals. Green leafy greens are good all year round. Sure. Uh, but in winter, you want to be steaming or grazing them, uh, chopping up and putting them in stews. Right. Um, so some form of cooking, not necessarily eating them raw. Uh, well, springtime's a great time to eat them raw too, but just because it's colder right. in the spring, and the it's still cold, winter sure. and spring, it's still cold. So a Some cooking. cold leafy green salad is less appealing maybe than a steamed or braised with a bit of garlic and With ginger a bit of ginger, and, yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. tamari and, and whatnot uh, is going to be more warming. Okay. So we, we, we want to eat with the seasons. We want to look at, well, in the cold times of the year, we want to eat more warming foods, more right. sustaining Dirty food. Sure. And sure. then at the hotter times of the year, we want quick energy. Leafy. And that's yeah, and that's yeah. when that's when all the fruits come into season. Ah, uh, right. So of course. See, nature gives us what we need, what's perfect at the right time uh, of year. If we just don't play around there's with her. A, there's <laughs> a lot of wisdom with eating with the season, and if it can't even grow here, if if it isn't growing here at this time of year, or it just can't even grow here. Right. It's probably not suited to your climate. Right, right. So that's okay. it. With these, I mean, they all have lots of chlorophyll and um, uh, fiber. And if you research each individual one, you'll find which ones have more potassium, which ones have more vitamin sure. K, which ones have okay. more of. Uh, I, I personally don't try to memorize that. I right. just try to eat them every day. Okay. <laughs> now, from what I, I know about beets, beets are good for a blood cleanse, are they yeah, not? Yeah, raw in a juice, fabulous, and a borscht, fabulous. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Again, at the, in the winter, you're wanting more of the warming foods. So more of a soup. Yeah. Okay. Um, so um, cooking them or eating them in a soup is, is great. Okay. Um, okay. Of course, yeah. the juice is great too, but if I was doing a juice with those in the winter, I'd make sure I put ginger in there to warm and it up. garlic and those things to warm it up. Okay. Now, what about celery? We've got some celery over here, which I know is often used in cleansing, but yeah. this is not something you'd want to eat in the wintertime. Oh, or it's, could you? it's nothing wrong with eating it in the wintertime, it's just eat it warm. warm. Eat it in a soup or eat it, uh, if you do put it in a juice or eat it fresh, if you're eating it fresh, just, just bear in mind you need more sturdy food than that so oh, maybe okay. instead of just eating a celery stick eat celery with with some uh, goat shells in it or, oh, okay something or, warming it up a bit or chop it up and put it in a stew or sp add to your spaghetti sauce right um, so you're getting that hearty warming aspects of it and okay. there's no harm in juicing all year round it's just if you are juicing in the winter juices are generally cold and wet right and in winter it's cold and wet right. we don't want that we need more warming drying right. Right. Food okay. To, to nourish us. Okay. So, um, now kale's grown a lot here on the island year round. Yes. How do you use kale? How would you use oh, it? Well, I chop it up and put it in soups. Soup? I, I, I make kale chips. It's okay. really yummy. Okay. Uh, my son absolutely loves it. So I grow, I have it in my garden. He's eight now, and he'll just go down there and start eating it. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Like, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's great. Good. Yeah. Um, so um, chop it up and put it in sauces. Okay. So you know, if you're going to do a, a, a stroganoff and you know it doesn't normally say put greens in it, put why, no harm in adding greens. Right. right. Uh, spaghetti sauce, add spinach or chopped up kale. I always um, I find this part of the kale, or the char. This is charred. Right. I put this on the cutting board on its side and then I cut this right off. Okay. And I make a big stack of all the leafy green part and then I chop it up. Okay. Nice and small. So you don't use the stem then? Not so much. Um, if I did use it, I'd probably just chop it up like celery. Okay. But I wouldn't leave it attached because these don't cook down the same way that, say, spinach does. These okay. hold together and stay together. I've noticed firmer, that. Yes. Yeah. Um, where spinach will just kind of go to mush. It does. Yeah. Um, these kind is collards and. Uh, um, the lacinato kale. Sure. This stuff's wonderful. This is my favorite. This is Russian kale, or it's called uh, black lacinato, and it's very hardy in this climate. It's perfect for this okay. kind of heat time of year. Now, let me ask you is there any particular thing here that you would absolutely definitely want to buy organic? 
Are there some things here that you can get away with? Not, many people struggle with the idea, should I buy organic or not organic? Are there some that you should uh, definitely buy organic? Um, I know there's entire lists of this available there are, on the internet. There, there you are on the internet. Google this and you can, you know, top 15 vegetables always buy organic. I know sure. apples and berries are the primary uh, peaches, peaches right. stone fruits. Things that get covered with them a lot over time, right. the sweeter things okay. that attract more pests, All right. those are the things that uh, generally get more Sprayed insecticides more. and more... Uh, so so say I something like a squash, when you're eating a squash, is that that important to buy organically? Um, I've bought either way, if I, you are removing the outside of it, right? right? So, like for instance, a carrot is under the ground, it's not directly sprayed, so, you know, if you wash it, you're probably washing off most of it, whereas with the lettuce, it's harder to wash. It is harder to it wash, is, yeah. It's being directly sprayed. Right, okay. So, if I, I always buy organic greens. Right, okay, uh, thank you. Because they're the ones that, are, if that's out of the ground, it's being directly put on it. Right. Um, other things I worry about less, but always organic apples, always organic berries. Uh, stone fruit, tree fruits. Okay. Um, I've grown broccoli and I see what happens when caterpillars you know, get on there yeah. and they are so hard to see that you cannot, it's very hard to see and there'll be like a caterpillar right there and it's exactly the same color as the broccoli and you cannot see oh, it. Oh, is that right? You, have so to, you literally have to just like touch it to see whether wow. it's a caterpillar or not. It's so hard to see. Okay. So. Okay, so when, when uh, potential clients call you up and ask you to cook a meal, do you do they ask for organic only, or do they ask for a mix, or how do you how does your good for you business how does that work? Generally, most of my clients want at least some, mostly organic. Okay. I have probably one out of three clients are like everything has to be organic, absolutely everything. Uh, the other. 75% of my clients are like, well, you know, we want free-range organic, unmedicated, some version of healthier than, uh, they're definitely saying they don't want medicated, okay. or um, genetically modified, that's becoming a very well-known issue on Vancouver Island. It's good. Yeah. It's great. Uh, there's a lot of people getting educated on that and wanting and liking when they see my website that I use all non-GMO, non-irradiated herbs and spices. I don't right. know any of it. I don't know, I can count on one hand the businesses in town that I, food right. services businesses in town that I would guess are doing that as right. well. Now it's many people don't know what irradiated right. is. Can you speak about that a little irradiation. bit? Irradiation. Irradiation um, of spices. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's not a very well-known issue. No, it's not. Uh, it's a standard, it's a standard practice in uh, the, the spice industry to irradiate the spices once they are dried. Once in some po at some point during the processing, they're treated with a low dose of irradiation. Uh, why this is interesting is that in Canada, it's not required by our laws for that to be labeled as radiated, irradiated, or radulated. Is is what the label would say. Right. But in Canada. All that's really required is that it be listed that it's got a preservative. Ah, so okay. they're considering low doses of radiation a preservative, which what irradiation does is it changes the molecular structure of the cells to the point that pests and um, fungus or molds no longer recognize it as basil or mm -hmm. whatever it was. Right. Uh, if if a mold doesn't recognize a, a bit of dried basil as basil anymore, I wouldn't want to eat it. Well, then how does our system recognize so it? So how does yeah. the human digestion system go? Okay, what is this? Right. You know, exactly. It's, uh, so that I've been educating about that for 15 years. Right. So I'm very passionate about the whole irradiation thing because it's not labeled in Canada. Right. So nobody's even. It's, <laughs> It's not even hitting the news the same way GMO is. Right. Um, I bring it up a lot in my practice on digestive issues, yeah. and people just don't know about it. Yeah. They think they're buying a, a spice that's just been imported from yeah. wherever. 
Well, if you look at the natural life cycle of a, of a plant, it's a year usually, and if you harvest it and dry it and you use it over the winter and then the next year another plant comes up, really if you're expecting your spices to last more than a year, you're asking more than what's natural. Right. So buy smaller amounts, buy just what you need, look for on the labels non-irradiated, at the very least non-irradiated and GMO free. Right. It's not as big of an issue, the organic with the spices, because generally herbs and spices are very hardy. Okay. Uh, but the by when you do buy an organic spice, by law, by rule of the regulations, it will be non-irradiated oh, and okay. non-GMO. That's good to know then. Yeah. Thank you. Thank so you. the getting organic is your guarantee right. with the spices. But uh, I like the packages here in the store. They all say non-GMO, non-irradiated, whether they're organic or not. All right. Very clear. Uh, yeah. So uh -huh. We're lucky to have Planet Organic and other stores yeah. doing that for us. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I tell people about when they're asking me about, well, what is this irradiation business? If you want to take a peek at what some of the other spice companies are doing, just go over to any major grocery store and go in and look and read the labels. The imported spices say radulated. Ah. But the Canadian and American and British don't, don't. say that. Yeah, Wonderful. but the, the exotic imported from third world and, and right. India. Okay. Don't. That's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. Laura, thank you very much for being on the show. I <laughs> really appreciate it. That's all the time we have for tonight. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Hopefully there was some knowledge here that will help you in your spring cleansing and in your dietary choices. On behalf of all of the crew here at Shaw Cable 4 and myself, Cameron Moffat, I thank you for showing up and watching the show and have yourself a good and pleasant evening. Good night. Okay, wonderful.